All right. Well, it's 9.45 or uh, Eastern time anyway, so I'm going to get started. Um, welcome, everyone. This is going to be our first MudCore dev call. We're going to be hosting these every month, the last Thursday of every month. Um, so the, basically, the cadence is going to be every two weeks, we'll have a meeting, this core dev call, and then community demos as well, same time slot. So uh, the purpose of the meeting is just to kind of sync up everyone from the contributors and the core devs and everyone building with MUD. So shortly, I'm going to be handing it over to Alvarius, and he's going to be going over status update, you know, change log, breaking changes, and what we'll be working on for MUD in the next month or so. Um, additionally, we'll be covering some of the contributors that have made some notable contributions and talking about the team a little bit, uh, and also just letting everyone know how they can start contributing on MUD. Uh, and yeah, with that, I will hand it off to Alvarius and, or oh, actually, oh, before I even do that, so here are the devs. Um, we have six core devs right now. We got Alvarius, Frolic, DK1A, Auth, Call, Will, and Interpreter. So these are people that are actively working on MUD, on the core protocol, on the core framework. Um, but we also have a lot of contributors. So we have, I believe it's eight contributors right now, people that have officially merged a PR to MUD. The three that you see highlighted there um, in red are people that are new. So just give them a, a quick welcome. They've made their first contribution in the past few months. And uh, every call will be welcoming more core devs and contributors. And uh, one thing to note is that to get the contributor role in the community, all you have to do is make a PR, get it merged, start contributing to the core protocol. And if you are interested in becoming a core dev, you can reach out to me or anyone on the core dev team and we can talk about that. We do offer uh, grants for people who do want to take it seriously and get committed to being a core dev. Um, but you can also just spend a little bit of time here and there contributing and become a core dev. Um, so yeah, with that, I will hand it off to Alvarius and he can get started with our status update. Amazing. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. So as many of you know, we launched uh, MUD2 a couple of weeks ago during ETH Global. Um, at least the, the alpha version of that. And so right now, the main focus of the entire core team is to release a stable version um, so that we don't have any more breaking changes and people can just build on that and yeah, don't, don't have to integrate breaking changes all the time, essentially. And there's essentially three big things that are missing right now that we're fully focused on right now, which is the sync stack, the plugin foundation, and then like a little protocol overhaul, basically um, finishing all the, all the small missing pieces, which would be breaking um, so we want to do that before the stable release. And now I will briefly go over um, the like two of these focuses um, to to show you yeah what we mean by what we mean by that and just to give some more context. Um, one of them is the sync stack, and what we mean by the sync stack is essentially the way we synchronize the contract state with the client state. And right now we already have something implemented, and in fact we implemented it three times already. Uh, once for the client once for mode, so the, the, the default indexer, and then a third time for uh, in C-sharp for uh, the Unity um, plugin. And the problem with that is that essentially all of these three implementations are black boxes. They All of them take a block number basically as an input stream of block numbers, and then the output is some state that you can query in some way, but the, the way you query it is also different for each of these different implementations. Um, and so we want to get to a point where this is way more modular and you can switch out individual pieces of the sync stack um, and you know what are the shared interfaces between these different pieces and you know um, each of the pieces has uh, like some small functionality basically that's easier to test and also easier to see if the different implementations and different languages for different platforms are uh, feature complete or feature equal. Um, and so essentially we split up the entire stack into four pieces, the parsing piece, which is um, just to basically decoding the events and turning them into uh, yeah, like typed, typed state updates, basically. Then we have the chain sync, and there we have two different, two different approaches. Um, one of them is what we currently do, which is the event-based chain sync, where we listen to uh, events, basically, or we, we listen to block numbers, and then we fetch the events for those block numbers, and then decode them using that uh, parsing encoding, uh, like decoding library, and then turn that into state updates. And then the state updates, again, have a shared interface, and we can pipe them to different data stores. So one of them we already have, which is RECS, uh, which we right now use on the client. And then you can query that using RECS queries as today. But we also want to get to the point where we can pipe that into Postgres, 
like we right now do with uh, with Moat, with the indexer. Um, and we also want to be able to pipe that into something like SQLite so that you even can do SQL queries on your client and the queries that you do on the client have the same format as the ones you do for uh, Postgres, so for the remote indexer, basically. And then there's also another piece that we were thinking of integrating, which is G2PG um, from our friends at Index Supply, which would be basically a, a different approach for turning a state up, like, a, a, like the chain state into the data store. But because we turn all this thing, like this, this whole stack into something modular with shared interfaces that will be much easier to um, replace and just basically take that small piece and plug it into the sync stack. And then once that's done, um, you can basically mix and match each individual module and each individual piece to create the, like to sync on the platform you want to sync, where, whether it's the browser or a Node.js based, based indexer or um, a Go based index or C sharp or whatever. Um, so that's what we're currently uh, focusing on. The ones with the green check mark is are basically already done, whereas uh, the ones with the construction fence are the ones that we are currently working on, and hopefully we'll have some more to share for that uh, in the next in the next update. And then the next very exciting thing that we're uh, currently focusing on is um, the plugin foundation. The reason for this is we want to make um, we basically want to get mud like I said into a stable state and have. Uh, essentially like a small surface area of things that are in the core protocol um, that then we can have stable and we can audit it and people can um, basically trust it that it won't change anymore or at least no breaking changes anymore but we still want to add features of course um, and we also want the community and and everybody to be able to add uh, like functionality and extend the functionality and integrate with different other systems and that's why we want to have um, a very strong and very powerful plugin system we already have a yeah, like a bare bones plugin system working right now. So there's actually already people from the community working on plugins um, for MUD. And it's already possible to basically create an, a module is what we call it for the on-chain um, logic that then can be added to worlds, like adding systems, adding tables, adding hooks and all of that in basically in, an on-chain installation script if you want. And then it's of course already, still pos uh, already possible to create some kind of uh, client utils and client UI that you can then import into clients. Um, but there's two things we're currently changing, which is one, how you define the plugins. Right now, it's uh, it's already possible, but using a different approach than, than we want to do. We want to make it more simple and basically have a plugin just be one object that you export that then uh, defines all the things that, that this plugin is, is doing, essentially. Um, and we also want to make it more powerful by making plugins possible or enabling plugins to add new CLI commands to the mod CLI, um, extending the config, and hooking into other plugins so that basically plugins can execute logic based on what other plugins are doing. So yeah, this is something else we're, we're currently uh, focused on. And again here, not fully done yet, but you'll uh, hear more about this in the next update. And then there is um, one general update, which is right now the way we release new canary versions of MUD is that every time uh, a PR is merged into main, there's a new canary release. But there isn't really a change log. Basically, the change log is you would have to go into the PR list or into the commit history um, and read the commit messages. Um, we want to change that. We want to go to a place where we still release alpha releases, but we release them once every week. And then with every release, um, there's also a change log attached to them. So then it's much easier to upgrade. You don't have to upgrade for every commit that's merged into main. But when you want to upgrade, you have a change log um, that you can, can that you can follow and that it, like basically explains. Uh, what are the breaking changes and how you upgrade um, to that new version. And we hope to have that ready very soon. Uh, the PR to implement that is open, um, will be merged soon. And hopefully then next week will be the first um, basically official alpha release with a change log. Um, and then like Kushaza said earlier, uh, always happy for contributors. We have a we have a product board for basically with small ticket items um, that you can just have a look at. It's essentially all of those are good first issues that allow you to um, touch a small part of the code and get familiar with the, with the code base. And you can find that at contribute.mat.dev. And if you want to either stay updated uh, between these calls with what we're up to, um, or even maybe want to contribute to some larger ticket items, or even want to become a core dev, you can head over to roadmap.mat.dev, which is the product board that we use as core devs um, to plan out the roadmap. And yeah, with that, I'll hand it back to Kushaza.
Awesome, yeah, thank you, Alvarius. So yeah, anyone can feel free to request to come on stage and ask questions themselves, or you can just uh, throw a question in the chat and I can pass it along to Alvarius and the other core devs. Hmm, okay, any questions, anyone? <laughs> People want to see Will. <laughs> yeah, Will, Will is uh, currently helping us implement um, the change sets thing, so the, the thing that will enable us to have weekly alpha releases with a change log. I assume we'll also be able to manually release if we needed something to go out sooner than the weekly cadence. Yes, I, I believe actually the <clears throat> the way it will be is there will still be um, canary releases with every with every merge, um, but then also in addition basically those alpha releases which have a, like a lower cadence and and the change lock attached. So if you really want the latest change, you can you still have that option if you want. And it looks like we got a few people typing out, which is um, probably questions. So we'll give them a, a, a minute to, to finish their questions there. When can we expect MUD to, to be stable? That's a very good question. Um, we So you can head over to the roadmap uh, uh, page. They basically see all the things we still want to get in there before we consider MUD too stable. Um, at the same time, we do think even, even if it's basically in the alpha release stage, um, once we have these three things ready that, that I just talked about, um, it will be even if officially we're still in alpha, there will be less and less breaking changes. And then once we're confident that there won't be more breaking changes, then we uh, basically remove the alpha tag. But I would I would expect it to be within the next month or two. OK, um, second, second question uh, by Kiru. Um, very new to the MUD ecosystem and came here by seeing you guys during the ETH Global Hackathon. Is there any docs or resources we can read to get up to speed? Um, yeah, Kujaza just sent the link. The, the best resource that we have currently is probably mud.dev for the documentation. And then um, on that website, you also find a, a tutorial, uh, our Emojimon tutorial, which is what people usually start with, because it's, it's basically a walk through, through your first app with mud. And then there should also be a Ludens just shared the YouTube channel that we also have a couple of uh, resources, a couple of videos, tutorials, and walkthroughs. Um, that should help you get started as well. Cool. Skygirl is asking um, how to make use of Open Zeppelin libraries. Uh, do we need to rewrite the contracts to system and states? Um, that very much depends on what which library you you're talking of. Like um, I, I know there's a couple like popular like for example ownable libraries. Um, that would be yeah, I, I basically, basically it's a, it's a different approach um, because everything that would be in those libraries wouldn't be in the MUD storage, so you wouldn't be able to sync it um, through all the default index and all the default in infrastructure. Um, so I would personally recommend just to just basically re-implement it in MUD to have the, the full advantage of all the native features. Um, but it's it's probably also still possible to use Open Zeppelin libraries for specific features, but then those are basically outside of your of your mud world. I mean, inside of the of the world, but don't benefit from the features you have. We, if, if, in like in detail, if you want some in detailed advice, you can um, open a thread in mud help, or I believe I actually saw that message somewhere. Maybe you already have a thread open. We can chat there later. Um, what? Okay. Question about mode. What's the current state of mode? Um, we are. So there's at least one known bug that we're currently debugging. We recently added integration tests. So um, basically, once those pass, 
it should be in a good stage, hopefully like very soon, um, like hopefully like next week or so. Um, any plans to support account abstraction in MUD? Um, there's some plans to support something like account delegation, essentially. Um, to Basically, the plan is to implement a, a different entry point into your world that's not call, but call from. And then uh, you can basically call that method to call any system from any account, but it will only go through if that account gave you the permission to do, to do that. Um, and then to determine the p permission, there would be some like um, either very simple or, or more complex system behind it. Um, that would be something that probably could be a plugin. Um, but yeah, so basically it's, that, or, or rather that would be a, a feature upgrade, not a breaking change essentially. Um, and so we will probably get to that after we, after the, um, after you get Matu stable. Um, I know that there's at least one team in the community who is working on, on that as well though. I want a MUD adapter where I can basically write some code to turn a non-MUD contract into something that plugs into the rest of MUD. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a great idea. I'm happy for contributions there as well. Cool, there's some chatting going on in the chat, but I think folks are mainly... Oh, is the time the same as two weeks mentioned? That is for streaming, for... Ent Wait, so that is... Oh, no, okay, so I'm not sure if I fully understand the question, but um, the mode currently in its current feature set um, is only used for loading the initial state, but not used for streaming updates from the contracts. That would still happen uh, via um, the RPC. Un until it's ready, so so that's not included in the in the one or two weeks now. But also at the same time, we're working on, um, like I said, uh, li like a, like like in the presentation, like the modularization of the whole sync stack, and then um, basically the current version of mode would just be one way to have an have an indexer, um, but there can also be other um, ways to index your state by by using yeah like plugging together different of the of the sync stack modules basically. Are there any existing implementations of MetaMask connection with MUD instead of the burner wallet? Um, there is, I think, that, so there's some examples on how to do it, but not not natively yet, essentially. Um, so be, basically, people have done it before. Um, there, there is, we've had an example at some point during ETH Global to show people. Um, but yeah, there's no, there's no native uh, built-in way yet. I'm very eager to get to this, but I feel like all the low-level networking stuff needs to get done first, so... It's kind of high on my list after I get through the networking code. Agol is asking, can I create a different front end with just using the MUD contracts? Um, okay, I think Kushaba already answered the question. I'm, I'm not sure I fully understand, but but yeah, basically, if you have a con if you have contracts, you can uh, create as many clients for those contracts as possible as as you want. Like it's it's the client is not. Um, the contracts don't depend on a specific client, basically. It's only the clients who depend on the contracts. All right, any more questions, anyone? Give it one more minute, see if we get any more questions from the people typing, and then uh, we'll see. Okay, I've oh. got another question from Skygirl. Um, yes, the clients are dependent on the contract, so without using mud client, can I directly talk to the contracts? Um, you, so is your question, can you like create a client without using the MUD libraries? So I'm still not fully sure 
Oh, okay, okay. Um, you can, but you would have to basically re-implement the, the, the logic that Mud provides to you. So, okay, so basically you don't have to use the templates, if that's what you mean. I would strongly uh, recommend still using the, the libraries because that's like, the, basically they, they, they just take the work from you. Like you would just have to re-implement all the logic if, if you would want to do that. Um, but, but you can still, like there's nothing preventing you from re-implementing the client logic or like the client utils. But the templates, again, if that's what you mean, that's just uh, kind of like a recommendation of the setup that we use. Um, but you can also use different setups. Like there's people using Next.js, for example, um, that we don't have as a template right now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So Skygirl said, oh, got it. So I just make use of the libraries and not use the templates. That's exactly right. And then Ali Reza was wondering about migrating from MUD v1 to MUD v2, if there's going to be any impact on the gas fees. And Luden answered, saying storage is much cheaper in v2, but logic cost does not change. Yep, that's right. And just to elaborate on that, Frolic is saying that we don't have any benchmarks yet, but it is just much less across the board. So we'll uh, we'll circle back to the community when we have like actual percentage difference between V1 and V2, but it will be less. Alvarius, will uh, both read and writes be cheaper, Alidress is wondering, to storage? Um, it would all be cheaper, yeah. So, so basically, the in mod one, um, the way we did the encoding of um, of storage was using ABI encode, which is extremely inefficient because it takes uh, essentially one storage slot for every element of an array and one storage slot for every element of a struct. So it's basically like extremely bloated, like very much not efficient. What we do in mod two is we pack it as efficiently as possible. We basically use ABI encode packed, but also applied to um, to arrays, so it's more efficient than basically anything that Solidity has by default for encoding. Um, it's 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 an, essentially the the same um, encoding, or even slightly more efficient than than native Solidity when you store something like a struct to storage. Um, the the reason why I say even more slightly more efficient is because um, we pack the length of the dynamic elements of your table into one slot instead of one slot per uh, per element. So in, in some cases, it's even cheaper than the native. Uh, it's definitely cheaper than V1 by, by a lot. We also store everything within a single contract rather than every component being a different contract. So you also have that um, less gas cost in terms of uh, communicating between contracts. Yeah. It's all centralized within one world. And yeah, so to, to fully answer the question, yes, both writing and reading would be cheaper because also for reading, it's more expensive if you have to read more storage slots. All right, um, last call, any more? Oh, actually, uh, Demurby asked a question. You want to grab that, Alvarius? Mm -hmm. So the question is, uh, I think on-chain gaming infrastructure is beginning to focus on rollups and scalability. Is there any plan on this, for example, creating a rollup? Um, I think we're not fully ready to talk about it yet, but there's potentially something in that direction coming as well. Stay tuned. When ZK mud. <laughs> All right, last call anyone. Any more questions? Oh, uh, um, maybe maybe this is a real question. When ZK mod, uh, <laughs> um, we I mean so basically we are like Lattice is uh, close friends with all the other folks from Zurex Park, which also have a lot of ZK uh, expertise and ZK teams. So maybe soon, maybe soon a ZK collaboration from that. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. It was uh, really great having everyone here. We'd love to see all the people joining today. Um, just want to give a, a quick call out again to contribute.mud.dev and roadmap.mud.dev. I will link it in the chat again before we uh, sign off.
And also, there's a lot of people in here that it seems like they're they're building on mud, or they're working on mud or whatever. Um, so if anyone is building and they don't currently have the mud tinkerer role, you can go into the become a tinkerer channel, share your repo, and you can get that new role. Um, so we'd love to see some of you pop into there and share your work. We'd also just love to see what you're working on. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everyone. All right, have a great day, guys. Yeah.